We're speaking with Jer- Jerome Shabazz, who's the founder of the Overbrook Environmental Center, and he's a proponent of green technology and uh, sustainable living, integrated wholeness, wellness, and health. And they're having a health wellness fair today. And so we want to get his impressions of the day and goals and objectives. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate talking with you today. This is a gorgeous day. Uh, we have a variety of, of objectives that we're fulfilling. One is creating this, this beautiful space where folks are able to come together and, and to uh, celebrate how communities function. And that's by enhancing and complementing each other through improved health, uh, healthy environments, uh, access to, to whole and healthy foods. You know, in our urban communities, oftentimes we have food deserts, we don't have access to natural amenities, and we're trying to uh, change that trend by uh, doing urban agriculture, uh, farming, and uh, bringing back that, that, that rural perspective in an urban setting. Well, the Overbrook Environmental Education Center uh, just uh, particip- began p- participating in an Environmental Protection Agency uh, Environmental Justice Grant. And what this grant is designed to do is to allow us to put together advisory teams and get uh, feedback from community members on what it takes to have a healthy community. So we're, as a result, having workshops on environmental justice. We have groups coming in from Eastwick second, section, Logan section of the city, talking about the projects that they're doing in their neighborhoods, and we're looking at how we can benefit from those best practices out here in Overbrook. Now, how, how are you coming along with your, your pilot program with the, the urban that you're, that you're uh, having this year? Well, that's coming along very nicely. We have a, a wonderful arborist uh, named Doris Stahl who's managing our, our garden program. Uh, the Philadelphia Orchard Project is now growing orchards on our site, so we have trees uh, that bear uh, peach, apple. We have some wonderful figs this year, had a great, great fig harvest. Uh, but our, our agricultural programming is doing very, very nicely, and we're incorporating students and schools in all of our work. As a matter of fact, we just received a uh, pilot project uh, to work on with the uh, Philadelphia Water Department called Soak It Up. So uh, using um, uh, uh, amenities for green infrastructure uh, to do infrastructural maintenance uh, around uh, stormwater collection. And we're going to be doing that from uh, 59th to 62nd on Lancaster Avenue with a team of uh, middle and high school students. Now, you just mentioned your cooperative your we're cur- yeah, we currently have about eight schools that we work with. Uh, we're getting ready to start a project with um, Pico Energy and the United Way, which begins this Monday, uh, where we have uh, four schools uh, learning renewable energy and renewable energy sources. So that's that's really exciting. We continue to work with Overbrook Elementary Schools in the area, uh, Overbrook High School. Uh, we have uh, some new partners now at the Richard Allen. Uh, their young students will be coming directly here to do their service learning and uh, internship programs around science. Yeah, elementary all the way up to high school. And we have always had uh, college students doing internship projects, particularly around stormwater management. Now, at one point you were working with Penn State, they helped you uh, build. already happening and the pilot project we worked on was to say well why aren't we also just helping these people apply for SNAP. This information was just verified by Social Security. A caseworker has just received it and is reviewing them for um, part of the medical assistance benefits and 
then that next piece is to say, what else can this be used for? Um, and that is, I feel like, shockingly simple and shockingly underutilized. Um, and so as part of this demonstration, um, we applied uh, in 40 counties across Pennsylvania, uh, close to 7,000 uh, people who applied for this extra health benefit through Social Security and then used that to identify them and also streamline the application for the food stamp program. Um, knowing that it's a population that's very likely eligible, um, it was an easy project um, to operate, but not an easy project to set up. So that's a little background uh, about what uh, we kind of go for um, with our outreach and um, providing simplified applications. We also just hope to be a, a single point of access for households in our community statewide um, to call and receive assistance. So um, I have referral postcards. This is a, a younger crowd overall, but feel free to you know, grab them for your community or family members. Um, we have a hotline number where uh, folks can call in. We'll go through a screening for uh, five benefits. How you doing today? Okay, how you doing? All right. You a local farmer or you come from nah, far away? They're coming from Virginia. I, just, I live in Philly, I'm just family. Okay. Right. <laughs> the farm is near uh, King Queen County, Virginia. Okay, yeah. so you're like outside of Richmond or something like that? We're east of Richmond, between Richmond and Tappahannock, okay. King and King County. You were, you were here before, right? You were up I've Maryland. been up here several times to the city. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. So what uh, type of acreage do we have? When the truck farm is only 50 acres. Uh -huh. But we have, you know, some other parts, some you rent out. But this is on mostly a truck farm. We have sweet potatoes and other vegetables here. Eggplants, cucumbers, oh, yeah. string beans, uh, peanuts. Um, what else do we have today? Greens and uh, sweet potatoes. Okay. Yeah. So how, how, how often and how far out the north do you come? We come by invitation. This is furthest north we go. We come. Yeah. Most of the time we're local uh, around DC, uh, and then we do what's called uh, called vegetable parties. People will invite us to their house, they tell their neighbors, right. we come that way. So I call them vegetable parties. Uh, because, uh, you know, it's kind of specialty grown, so we don't do door to door. Right. Because it's, right. to me, it's like a, it's getting fresh vegetables to the inner city or to people's houses. It's much better. And if I can't, if it's something I can't have, then there's some local farmers that I broker with to get the vegetables. Okay. So how can people contact you? Oh, uh, I have a information right here, a car. Oh, well, this is a video, so you Oh, okay, okay. So, this is called Taters and Greens. Uh, and I say that again? Hold on, Taters and Greens. Okay. Uh, and you can reach us at... Taters and Greens at yahoo.com. Okay. Okay. Spell okay. that, so... T A T. E R S taters yeah, yeah. in greens yeah. at yahoo.com. It's a play up on words. My my brother who farms has a degree in agriculture, and I have post grease too, so we know we know how to spell potato. Okay. Right. okay. What you got doing with that C club thing on, man? You got some connection to chain? Uh, just a whole little. Now he, your brother was saying that you're not organic, but you're sustainable. So what's the difference? See, he, he is an agriculture major, right. so he knows the distinction between that. Just to, to really say you're organic, you have to have a certificate verifying everything. Um, we're close to it, but we haven't gotten the official certificate right. saying that. Right. Um, because we don't use a lot of pesticides and right. we don't use a lot of fertilizer, right. so right. we're pretty close to it. Uh, true organic, uh, on a large scale sometimes, it's, 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 it's a matter of degrees. Just, you know, so he'll be the best one to answer that. Okay. Uh, he knows all about that kind of thing. In addition to what you have here, what else do you grow? Um, what you don't see here today would be uh, okra, butter beans, um, hi, radishes, um, 
tons of watermelons. We sold watermelons all summer long, cantaloupes, all the early crops. Right. Yeah. Uh, $2. I'll let you go ahead and take it. Okay, care. thanks. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm yeah. fine. We're into the late crops now. As, in, as the year goes on, all we're going to have for the rest of the year is potatoes, which we keep in a, in a smoke, in a house to keep them warm, and greens. And you'll have greens until a big frost, big snow. But we'll have these until Easter. But everything else here, see, we, all these things here were picked before the frost. And we had a frost uh, two yeah, days last ago. Year. So this is it. Say your name. Sonia Claxton. Okay. And where are you from? Philadelphia. Alright, and what is this Kaufman's Food Farm? So, um, the organization is Common Market. Common Market is a wholesale distributor of farm fresh produce. We work with about 75 to 80 farmers in PA, New Jersey, and Delaware. Mm -hmm. And we aggregate their demand and provide it for hospitals, universities, and schools throughout so the Delaware. are you a broker for them, or are you you're a representative? Yep. What's your function? So we're almost like we're the only middleman um, between uh, consumers and their food. So we work directly with farmers and making sure that they can access um, opportunities at institutions, um, institutions that are specifically looking to purchase local. Um, so, yeah. Now, do, is, you're the middleman, like from the retail end. Mm -hmm. Do is this fresh or is does it go through a process? In the process. No, we do not process. So the way it typically works is that um, either the produce is delivered directly to our warehouse at D and Erie, or we have our drivers go out to these different farms around PA, New Jersey, and Delaware to pick it up. And so they come directly to the warehouse, and from there they are repackaged lightly and sorted and sent out to the different so locations like and institutions. family farms. Um, most of them tend to be on small acreage, so less than a hundred acres. Mm -hmm. um, and most of these are second and third generation farmers um, whose goal is to make a livelihood and to can continue their family businesses. So about how many farmers are you contracted with? We work with about 75 to 80 farmers um, and our customers, the institutions, we work with about 200 institutions throughout the area. So they're relatively large institutions, middle size, small? Um, they vary. So they can be as small as a food cooperative or as large as, you know, a hospital or university. For demand and so we usually get orders um, so the way it works is that you know we say we let the farmers decide so it's based off of what they've what grown they grow, right? yep, and what's available and what came out um, you know from that season and so they'll let us know what their availability is and we let the consumers or the customers the institutions know what's available and so they can go shopping you know they shop for what they want and again, this is for institutions, so it's a wholesale, we're a wholesale distributor, and we work in large quantities, so cases, cases of farm fresh, right. cases of lettuce, cases of squash and tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Now, do um, you use technology, in other words, are you on the internet and people can see yeah. the produce? Yep. Okay. So well, we, um, we provide farm profiles. Right. Um, our goal is yeah, to be sourced. Yes, of the farmers and the farm, and then we talk about what some of their main growing items are. Um, and so that can be found at commonmarketphila.org, and that's commonmarketphila, P-H-I-L-A.org. 
So we just celebrated our fifth anniversary. Um, Common Market was founded by a husband and wife team, um, Hailey and Tatiana, five years ago. Our goal was to make good food accessible to all. And in doing that, they found that you know institutions were really interested in buying and purchasing locally grown food. Now, is this food certifiably organic, or is it sustainable, or is this just regular produce? Mm-hmm. So some of it is, um, it depends on the grower, but, you know, um, we often say that some of it is beyond organic. So we have some organic, we have some organic farmers, and we have some all-natural farmers. So all of our farmers use earth-friendly um, farming practices. They may use um, low to no spray. They may work with um, the, you know, the environment to, you know, not have to spray. So sort of preventative measures, um, and they also have insects. Yes, yeah, integrated pest methods. Yes. <laughs> um, what should people know about how? So this is all institutions. So it's not. Consumer, like families can order things or co-op. Mm-hmm. You couldn't have like a, a church form a co-op and mm-hmm. they be your, your client. Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah. So we work with anybody who can form together as a group, um, and that primarily happens through hospitals and universities. But we also have um, a program called the Delaware Valley Farm Share, which provides you know um, workplaces, schools and churches with the opportunity to pool their demand and to participate in what is considered a community-supported agriculture program. Um, And so in that, we work with 20 to 40 participants at one location, and we provide a delivery date every other week where they get, you know, what's in season and what's freshly picked. Right. So you provide the trucking or the rent or lease trucks? It's included in the price. So every participant signs up uh, for the program online at dvfarmshare.org. Um, and then from there, you know, the cost is $27 per delivery. Again, we have 20 to 40 participants at each site, and we deliver directly to that site in cases. And then from there, you know, people can participate in the in the program. Okay. Yeah. So what you have here are samples of some of the Yes. Yeah. So this is pumpkins. Um, Brussels sprouts are really so good this, is, this season. Uh, a Granny apple. Smith. Oh, this is a Granny, Granny Smith, Smith apple. Okay. And beans. then you have your string beans, okay. yellow onions, uh, garlic. Garlic, onions. And this is the first time I've seen Brussels sprouts not <laughs> in a, a package or something. Yes. So this is how they naturally grow? Yes. On stalks? On a stalk, yes. Okay. Yep. So. A good stalk would have how many heads of little... Wow. I mean, this is... Um, this is, You want it to be, I assume, as dense as possible. And so, you know, this is probably one... I tried to pick the best that I can okay. find from the bunch. Okay. Now, this is... <laughs> this is lettuce? Lettuce. So, we have red lettuce. Okay. Never seen that before. Never yes. saw that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, again, uh, give us yeah. some contact information. So, um, for institutions, it can reach commonmarketphila.org. And for consumers who are interested in purchasing into the community CSA program, um, that's dvfarmshare.org. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, say your name. Tammy Oshanaya. All right, and this is myhealthytreats.com. Yes, it is. Explain what that is. MyHealthyTreats.com is an easy, convenient channel website for people to order like healthy snack options. We have like gift items, gift boxes of healthy snacks that you can send to people during the holidays or for birthdays or for any occasions. Um, and then we have individual snack items that you can order as well. So everything can be purchased straight. Everything can be purchased straight from the website. Um, we also have a Facebook page, so you can find us on Facebook. On our Facebook page, we share lots of wonderful nutrition tips, nutrition recipes, and we're also on Twitter, so you can follow us on Twitter as well. So these are some of the products. We have like cranberry, almond, granola. We have banana so chips. They're, they're tasty because one of the problems people have with uh, nutritious snacks 
they're not loaded with the sugar and Ex people don't like it. Exactly. So this is different from that. They're healthy. They taste good. So they're great alternatives. It's like the banana chips. A lot of people find it as a great healthy alternative to like maybe a bag of potato chips. You know, these are, these these have like great nutritional value. They're really good. So it's a, it's a good way to like just get people eating more health conscious foods. Now, what can people when they go up on the website? What can they expect to see? On the website, there's a list of all the products there. You can click on each individual product that you're interested in. It's easy. You can place your order straight from the website. Um, for the gift sections, you can also input like a personal message if you want it delivered to someone else. You can input, right, type in like um, individual message you want sent to that particular person. If you get lost on the website, there's our phone number is, is on there as well. Um, our email address is on there as well if you wanted to contact us. Okay. Of course, you're locally in Philadelphia? Or yes, based somewhere? in Philly. Okay. Do you have a virtual store? Yes, it's a virtual store. Okay. Um, and you say you've been in business about six months? Yes, okay. it's been six months. This, this is... Like a franchise, or this is a startup. It's a it's a startup. Mm -hmm. It is a startup. So whose idea was it? This was my wonderful idea. <laughs> okay. So you were like a business major? Or something? No, I'm actually a nutritionist. I'm a di I'm a registered dietitian. So I've been working in the field of nutrition for over eight years. So part of this is what I do on a daily basis. I counsel patients on healthy eating. So that's where I actually got the idea from. Because a lot of times people find it hard to like make healthy choices when it comes to snacks. So now you mentioned something about special dietary orders. Uh, what, what does that entail? Um, from your perspective, what you're doing? Oh, special as far as like maybe um, there's a section on the website called Ask the dietitian. So on, if you click on ask the dietitian, you can ask any questions that are nutrition and health related questions that you may have straight from the website. So that's a good component of it as well. Okay. Uh, what's the advantage to you and your company coming to an event like this? Um, definitely sharing information, um, sharing not important knowledge on people that do come to these kind of events um, about kind of healthy eating, healthy food choices. <laughs> Mommy. So this is a family venture, so uh, tell us your name. Caroline. Okay. And you're her mother? Yes, please. Okay. So you're partners in this venture or you're supporting her? I'm supporting her. Okay. Alright. So what's the driving force for you to be supportive of her, other than the fact that she's your Because I think the the cause that she's doing is very good and is helpful to individuals, you know, on nutrition. Because so many people are obese and we want they want to live healthy. So and People like to eat snacks all the time, so it's nice to, if we have something like healthy treats that will benefit people's nutritionally. So that's why I'm supporting that. I know it's a, for a good cause. Now, is it difficult to convince people to, to change from the, the sugar laden, the chemical laden uh, candies, and what I call Franken foods, to something that's nutritious? Like yeah, if we keep talking about it, if people hear about it often, eventually they will, and they taste it and they see that it's good, people will eventually start changing from the sugar treats that they normally eat. Now, um, what, other than attending events like this, what other ways do you market your product? Um, through our networking sites, um, definitely through Facebook and through Twitter. You know, individuals that are familiar with that just spreading the word on those social media so you sites. Have a, you have like your network. Are they supportive? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I do attend various professional events as well, so I do share information about it with my colleagues. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give us the URL for the program notes at myhealthforce.com. 
That's it. www.myhealthytreats.com. Yep, okay. that's it. And you, you have a Facebook page? Yes, yeah. there is a Facebook page. Um, yeah, there's a Twitter page at on Twitter at My Healthy Treats is the Twitter page, and then for Facebook, same thing, MyHealthyTreats.com. Search the Facebook page, and you'll get directed straight to us. Maureen Breen. Okay. And I see you have two chickens here. Um, what's the significance of this exhibit and your movement? What are, you, what are you attempting to do? We are attempting to legalize our chickens in Philadelphia. We are currently the only one of the ten largest cities in the United States where you cannot have a chicken. You can have them in Chicago and New York, and you can't have them in Philadelphia. So we want to bring them back to Philadelphia. So when you say legalize, you mean you want to be able to have them in your yard? Correct. Okay. So you're not talking about the cockfights, right? Absolutely not. Dogs are legal, and dog fighting is illegal. We are people who want to have hens as outdoor pets and for egg-laying purposes, and we do not support cockfighting in any way, just as dog owners don't support dog fighting. They're, they're separate issues. Now, in a highly technical urban environment, how seriously do people take you? Because it very I, I, no, I, and I don't mean this in a disparaging way. I just mean that people tend to think of chickens as rural or in the country, right. uh, quiet uh, farms, and uh, just having chickens in a fast-paced environment, like in, in the cities, seems almost contradictory. So, how, what, what's your uh, argument? To that type of well, we're the only one of the ten largest cities where you can't have one, so obviously they're working. And how, 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 how large is? Now I do know that I used to work in Philadelphia. I just ride around a certain sections. People do have them. Lots of people have them. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the so. city, if the city finds out that they're there, the city's going to tell you that you have to get rid of them. Okay, one so of the fine for that. There's, I don't know if there is eventually a fine or not. Anyone I know who has received the notice from the city moves their chickens and does not pursue with the process. Okay. So, so it you're, you're, you, you want a bill to legalize having chickens as pets, right? Yes. Okay, so in addition to attending venues like this, how do you, how do you market your program, what you attempt to do? How do you let people know what, what, what you want to do, what you want to accomplish? Right. Well, mostly we do it through our Facebook page, Philadelphia Backyard Chickens, and I do it by coming out to events. The purpose of being an event at an event like this is also to teach people about chickens. As going back to your point earlier in the urban area, people say, "I have a little backyard. Can I have chickens in my yard?" And I tell them how much, how little space really a chicken needs. A dog pen the size of this table would be sufficient really? for your chickens. Absolutely, with a wood box a little bit bigger than this for some protection from the cold weather. Right. Uh, people ask me questions about roosters, um, whether the chickens, the hens need a rooster to lay eggs. Right. They do not. So and I explain. They don't need to be impregnated by a rooster? They do not. No? They do not. Okay. Uh, they will lay their egg without having the rooster around, mm -hmm. and you can eat that egg. So I explain to people the safety, the space needs, mm -hmm. the feeding, how easy it is to feed the chickens. You buy grain for right. them. They'll eat your kitchen scraps. We are involved with another group in the city called Healthy Foods Green Spaces, which is organizing urban farmers, individual farmers, anyone who's interested in how we're going to feed ourselves and keep our cities green. So by having uh, connections throughout the city, including Overbrook here, that's another way that we're advocating for our program. Now, how long have you had these? What, what type of what breed of chicken? The black girl is a uh, feather-footed conchin. Her feathers come all the way down over the bottom of her feet. Mm -hmm. And she's actually a very small chicken. She's fluffy. Her feathers are sitting in there sideways. So if you pick her up, she's very, very small. The brown chicken is a mix, including a breed called Aracuna. And the brown chicken lays an egg that has a bluish-green shell. The Aracuna breed lays that shell, and she has that mix in her, so she produces that kind of a, a shell. The black girl lays a shell that is um, brown. Nelly, these two seem really comfortable being here. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, my relatives had a farm, 
And being from the city, I used to chase them because that was, my aunt would get upset about that. Right. But, but they seem real, real calm. I picked these two because they are friends and because they are the most comfortable being out here and being around people. I have two other chickens. Is that a piece of apple? It's a piece of mango. Uh, I actually think that's a food they can't eat. They can't eat that. They but he can go get some of that apple. He fed them lettuce, so he wants to feed them again. Oh, okay. Um, these two do have the right personality for coming out. My other two are gray pencil points, and they're very skittish. I had them out at an event to give these girls a break, and they were very nervous. And I have them giving them some shade because the heat is hard on the chickens. So, and if a, a lot of people were to come around and they got very upset, the brown girl would start to hide underneath the black girl, and they would both be in the corner. And I would just put this piece of fabric over and give them a little bit of a break from the excitement. But these two do pretty well coming out, so they're selected to come out. Okay. Now, uh, what about <laughs> I don't other know if animals? I mean, say, if, say you had ten chickens. Mm -hmm. Um, what about the no. neighborhood animals? How do you protect no. the chickens from them? Well, I kept my chickens in a dog run, so they had fencing around them, and then I tied chicken wire on top. So they were completely enclosed because possums, raccoons, if a dog gets away, we have hawks in the city. Those sorts of things will take your chickens. And so I would imagine you have squirrels come to try to steal their food. Uh, I don't, I've never seen a squirrel get in there to try to steal their food, no. And they don't, attra I try to keep their coops clean as much as they're getting this kind of food now. I want to make sure they eat all that if they're in their other coop, that it's not sitting around. And I keep their food inside the wood box so at night it's closed up from other animals. If you, you know, I keep them clean and we never have had a problem with other predators. I have cats. And the chicken, the cats would go out back and they'd down the haunches, like, all right, I'm going to pounce. And then they'd look at the size of the chicken and I think they would just give it up. Oh. And I know people who have had chickens and dogs, you know, they're pet dogs, and the animals do fine. Yeah, well, like on the farm, they, they seem to eat a little. If there's enough space and everybody's well fed, they're not going to bother your chickens because it's easier to go eat alpo from a bowl than to try to hunt down a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and some chickens will peck you. You know, some of them are kind of aggressive. Some of them are. When they're sitting in their bot, their nest box and they're sitting on their eggs, they're, they're mother hens and they're protecting that. So when you go to take those eggs from them, they might let you know that they're not happy about it. But it would feel like hitting the bony part of your hand with your fingernail. And if you're sitting outside in sandals, they might try to peck at your toe and see what it's like. I've never seen one of my chickens break skin. Okay. And they're skittish. They don't really these are three years old, these girls. And they'll live till they're about eight years old. A normal life. And they will lay eggs their entire life, slowing down as they get older. About six to nine months, they'll start to lay their eggs. And it's very, very exciting to, to go out there and see that first egg. I would always open my nest box and say, thank you, ladies, every time they gave me an egg. Now, um, veterinary services, how... How expensive is it to keep chickens? From a veterinary, veterinary perspective, it's really not that expensive to keep chickens. They don't usually get sick, they just die. Oh, okay. So you're not going to so really you're not, see... You're not going to see it firm where the feathers are falling off and they got sores. No, like usually not. Right, okay. I've had four chickens die on me. Three of them I had absolutely no inclination that the animal was going to die. The fourth one, I thought she was looking a little tired, and then the next day she had passed. Some people do take the chickens to veterinarians. There are veterinarians that will treat the chickens. My experience has just been you don't see a lot of warning that the animal is sick. It's just that the animal is suddenly gone. They can get a little disease in their feet called bumblefoot, which is funny sounding as it is. <laughs> it's, um, it's a little swelling in the bottom of their foot. Uh, Watch those tiny fingers. <laughs> you're the grandfather, so you're watching the little fingers. <laughs> the chicken would just give it a peck. It wouldn't hurt. Some people do take them to veterinaries, and you can get services done. But with this bumble foot, it's a, a swelling in their foot, kind of like a callus, but very painful for them. Oh, so so. That makes it hard for them to move around. 
Yeah, so you have to keep it cleaned and, and wrap it. And Is there any uh, like pus or oozing out of it? Or? I did not see that when my chicken had bumblefoot. It was just a lump that was there. But by keeping it clean, it probably was an infection. I just would keep cleaning it right. for her. Right. How can people be, get more information about your movement and be supportive? Like you, they can join our Facebook page, Philadelphia okay. Backyard Chickens. Okay, all right. Um, have you networked with other uh, organizations, other, other um, people who are advocating on behalf of chickens? Is it just... We are the lead advocate on behalf of chickens here in the city of Philadelphia, and we are connected with all any organization around the city that's interested in how people can support themselves with food, mm -hmm. growing food. Right. So we are part of, as I said, this other group, Healthy Foods Green Spaces, which is the umbrella advocacy group in the city of Philadelphia for people interested in food issues in our city. Right. Well, thank you for taking time to speak with me. Thank you.